Good morning, this is Adam Jones from Watercraft Creative. Hope you guys are well. I am down here in the gorgeous Pembrokeshire countryside, stood on the slip, about to launch this Smartwave 4200 to go for a day's bass fishing with Rory um, from Watercraft Creative. Now the plan today is to get out on the water and obviously have some fun. Uh, we've towed this boat all the way from Berkshire, which is where we live, to Pembrokeshire, which is where my parents live, um, and there's some excellent bass fishing and a great day to be had on the water. First thing I would say is from all of my experiences of towing um, various boats over the last couple of years, it's something that at the beginning of the process I was quite nervous about and now having done many, many launch and recovery sessions, probably something like 35 a year, um, I've become quite comfortable with. So today I'm going to talk you through exactly what we're going to do to get this boat ready to launch. Then we're going to launch it, go out and have some fun and then we'll talk you through exactly what we do to get it back on the trailer, get it all strapped up, safe and ready to go and then obviously get back on the road and head back to base. So before I go, we're just going to quickly unstrap everything apart from this front strap at the front here. We're going to take the trailer board off. We're going to take all the electrics off of this trailer. We're going to take the back strap um, of the boat off. The reason we're not going to take this front strap off is because that is holding the boat onto the trailer. The winch, as Andy says, at SBS is not a boat retention device. It's a means for getting the boat on and off the trailer. So until that boat is virtually in the water, I will leave that front strap on so that if anything did happen, that boat isn't gonna fly off the trailer. It's just an extra safety mechanism. So that front strap will stay on, everything will come off, all of the fishing gear will go on the boat, and then we'll get this boat in the water. Come with me. Right, so we've taken everything off, trailer boards off, electrics are off, back straps off, tied our lines on, um, everything's on the boat. Importantly, we've got our life jackets, um, life jacket on the helm seat as well for whoever it is that's gonna drive the boat off of the trailer. Um, just the last thing to remember is your trailer board um, bits back here. You just need to remember to loosen those and slide them back in so they don't foul. Um, they would be fine because the boat's obviously gonna float away, but just to make sure. So I'm just gonna do the one on this side as well. Um, so both of those are locked in. Uh, obviously your engine has been trimmed up, just make sure it is still trimmed up for going down um, the slip. What we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna move the car slightly further back. We'll get this so that I can get to the strap um, on the front, take the strap off, then reverse it a little bit further into the water. Rory will be on the boat ready to go. Um, We'll get the engine into the water once the trailer is in the right place. Um, undo the strap on the front, send it back a little bit further and those bunks will go deep enough, the boat will float and Rory will be able to drive off. So let's go try and do that. Right, so the last thing to remember, probably the most important is the key for the boat. Um, I'm gonna pop this on the helm, ready for Rory to turn on the engine and drive the boat off of the trailer. It sounds ridiculous, but if you don't put that key on the boat, you get the trailer in the water, all the straps are off, you're ready to go, the boat slides off the trailer, you won't have an engine and you will just float around um, and probably land on the slip somewhere. So, keys are on the boat, I'm gonna jump in the car and move us back into the water. Right, so the trailer is in the water, Rory's on the boat, keys are in, ready to go. Um, as you can see, we're basically all the way to the waterline now. This is a bunk trailer, so this boat is gonna stay on the trailer before the back of the boat is floating. So I'm gonna loosen off this strap, just take away the, uh, the strap that's holding the boat. And then what I'm gonna do is just slowly reverse in for that last meter or so till the boat is ready to go the back will start to float, Rory will be able to trim down the engine and then drive the boat off of the trailer. Um, I'll keep an eye on my mirror as I go. Both of my windows are down so that Rory can shout and tell me anything if he needs to. Um, let's get this boat on the water.
Right, so Rory is in. He's gonna just sit behind me at the slip uh, and wait for me to come back down. I am going to take the car up to the car park. Incidentally, this is one of those things with slipping your boat that makes things easier when you're doing the research um, of a slip, is obviously you need to find out whether or not the slip is good enough for you to launch your vessel, whatever that is. Um, but also doing a little bit of research about parking, uh, obviously not just for you, but for your trailer. Um, so here is fantastic. It's a lovely slip you can launch in most states at the tide. And an added bonus is it's free parking for car and trailer. So let me get the trailer off the back of the car. I've got a wheel lock. Another thing to think about um, is you need to be able to secure your trailer while you're um, out on the water. So we're gonna stick the wheel lock on, um, pop the car next to the trailer, and then get ourselves down to the boat and go and catch some fish. Speak to you in a bit. Right, so the trailer is locked up, the car is parked, the boat is in the water. Rory's found a lovely little slip that we can kind of put the boat on nice and easy, tie up, get ready to go. Plan now is to get out there and go and find some bass. So as you can see behind me, the water is absolutely glassy. We've got about eight mile an hour of wind today. Smart Wave looks fantastic in the sun. All that we've got left to do now is catch a few fish and fingers crossed, we can do that. Come with us. What a fantastic day on the water. All that's left now is to get the boat back onto the bunk trailer and get ourselves back to Berkshire. As you can see, Rory has reversed the car down the slip. The trailer is now in the water. The back rollers are underwater and probably a third of the bunks are wet. This is enough to get the boat up and onto those bunks, but you want them to be far enough out of the water that the boat stays on top of them once you've driven on and doesn't float back away because you'll struggle to clip on. I'll talk you through what I'm doing as I go, as I bring the boat up onto the trailer. Here we go. Right, so as you can probably hear, it's really windy. Uh, I'm coming onto the trailer at the moment. Something to think about is the wind's blowing from left to right as I'm coming in. Got a little bit of tidal movement from right to left, but generally speaking, I'm gonna get pushed from the left side to the right side. So I'm just crabbing the boat across at the moment. And on this trailer, I'm just looking to get the front of the nose onto that first roller and then turn the back end of the boat in. Just trimming the engine up. 
just going to turn the back end of the boat in once I get to the trailer to straighten myself up and then drive it up those bunks. I'm trying to do as much of it as I can just on tick over. You don't want to be making big movements. And as you can see, we're getting blown around a fair bit here. Trim the engine up as you can probably hear. Now I'm comfortable with the line there. I'm just going to come off the power, let it get onto the rollers like that. Now I'm just going to steer to the right, bring the engine up a touch, and straighten myself up onto the roller. There you go, the boat slides across, turn it a bit more to the left. There we are. And now we're going to go straight. And that is the end of the trailer. So the engine's off. trimmed it up and now I'm sitting on the bunks. Now the beauty of these bunk rollers is that I can now move forward and the boat is now sat on those bunks and I can lean forward here and clip this on um, which is great if you're short-handed. Obviously Rory could jump out and obviously put that that front that front uh, ratchet on for me. Um, make sure the engine is trimmed up. And we are all good. I'm just going to give Rory the thumbs up and uh, move us forward a touch, and then we'll get everything strapped on. So as easy as that. Things to think about is obviously wind and tide um, or current if you're in the river as to how that's going to affect the boat as it's coming onto the trailer. Be positive but not too fast. That'll do, Rory. Uh, yeah, be positive but not too fast. Um, and uh, you can do everything on tick over. Right, let's get this boat strapped up and we can get on the road. Right, so that's it. We need to get back in the car. We need to get back home. Uh, but before we do, we had to get the boat and the car off of the slipway. It's pretty busy at the moment, people getting their boats on and off of the water. But once we got the boat back on the trailer, the obvious happened. We've got the straps back on the front, straps back on the back, trailer board on. Make sure that the, um, the trailer board arms are nice and tight before you start your journey. Make sure that the ratchet um, at the front is nice and tight, strapped down um, and ready to go. Key off the boat, get your engine trimmed up, Make sure that your trailer board is at the extremity of your load and you are good to get your boat and your trailer back on the road safely towards wherever it is that you live. The key things to remember when it comes to trailering your boat and launching and recovering your boat is planning both in and out. So make sure you look at where you're going to slip. So look at the slip, look at the car parking uh, that's available within that area. When you get there, you need to look at how far the slip goes. All of those standard things, make sure you're not going to suddenly find out that when you come back at low tide, um, there's no slip there to get your uh, boat back onto your trailer. Once you've done that planning, it's about executing the plan as calmly as possible. Make sure both yourself and your crew know what they're going to be doing, tying on fenders, tying on lines, putting the key on the boat, those types of things. Um, get out, enjoy yourself, go and explore the country. There's so many amazing slips, both fresh water and salt water, to be able to take your boat. It's not this big, difficult experience. A little bit of planning makes it really easy and you can get out there and have some fun. We're going to be doing some more videos uh, like how to launch and recover your boat on a roller trailer, but most of these rules apply across both bunk and roller. The key is to plan and get out there and have some fun. We'll speak to you guys soon.